name is Kilton. Um, where I'm from, born and raised Miami, 305 till I die. Uh, and uh, what was it? What was the last one? How, how it came to Christ. Um, I was going into the fourth grade. I was um, home um, in my room by myself and I turned on the television. There was three channels that was working. One was a telemarketing channel, the other one was a news channel. The last one was TBN. I'm sure all of you young people will not know what TBN is. Probably the older people will know what TBN is. Um, yes, and so, <laughs> Gave an offering, yes. I, I sold a seed of $1,000, it was great. No, that didn't happen, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but uh, there was a lady on there, her, her name was um, um, Jan Crouch. She's older generation, and she, she gave a gospel presentation. And I was in my room by myself, weeping, because I felt the presence of the Lord. I gave my life to Christ. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Elijah. Yeah, I'm Elijah. Um, I grew up in Orlando. Or else they was a little. <laughs> <laughs> uh, There's like two people here from Orlando. Where's Crystal? Um, I brought some friends from Orlando. Um, gosh, I hate South Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I want people to feel like they hate me and then slowly bring them back. <laughs> so I'm like hating them. Good job. <laughs> um, uh, I got saved when I was 14 uh, on a mission trip in Ensenada, Mexico. Um, so spiritually, I am Mexican. <laughs> because I was born again there. So my first birth doesn't matter. My second birth is the one that counts. So. Amen. Amen. JD. What's up? My name is JD. I'm originally from Argentina. Woo! Years ago. church or the ministry, but um, 
thinking of that verse in Galatians. It says, how foolish can you be after starting your new lives in the spirit? Why are you now trying to become perfect by your own human effort? And I think uh, I was still in ministry, but um, I was introduced to some things that weren't nice to see. And I was addicted to some stuff, watching some stuff. And so I think the way I came to the Lord was super fresh. And it was like a movie. I could describe it at that Royal Rangers camp. But then I went through a lot of struggles because... I guess I was this foolish person who was trying to, by my own effort, shame myself, guilt myself, repent, because I knew I had to preach at youth group every Friday, and it was like this pattern for many years. So in that way, I walked from the fresh beauty of being a son and the spirit for many years. And um, but I'm, I'm back. I know I'm a son. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to find language to explain the process and what you're talking about. But I got saved so young. So I think that there was a reference that God is real in me from a very young age. And I grew up with that and I honored that. But there was definitely um, a backsliding season. And and I'm trying to explain it because it's not even that I would say it's like this, oh, I walked away from Jesus moment. It's like I knew what I was doing was wrong, but I just still wanted to like see if the, the grass was greener on the other side. And um, that was definitely like high school um, for me, just like hanging around the wrong people, going to the parties, drinking, doing all of these things that I that I know I wasn't supposed to do, but it was like, I don't know, I'm hanging with the cool kids, so like, Lord, just forgive me on this. I just wanna do it. Um, and obviously those things just don't satisfy. What the world has to offer doesn't satisfy. And I think I learned that the hard way. Um, and really came to the moment of like, okay, I just want my complete satisfaction to come from you, Jesus. I wouldn't say that I walked away. Uh, I was born in a very small town with like 50,000 people, so I was like, Tom, I'm what? And moved to a big city, and I would say I was innocent and dumb uh, to, you know, just try to make friends, and I got into the wrong groups, introduced to so many wrong things that I should not be introduced at, at a young age, or never, never be introduced to, hello. Um, but yeah, and as I was, you know, in my innocence, still living a life in sin without knowing the Holy Spirit from making me like crazy. Uh, and from that, I became a little like, legalistic. And that's when I see my, uh, apologies, my knight in shiny, my knight in shiny armor, because I was strapped in sin and addictions and, you know, so much stuff. And he slayed all the monsters and, you know, dragons of lust, legalism in my life. Yeah, I think I got, like, re-saved, like, two years ago. I was saved, but it felt like I got saved again because the, the things I had unlearned were so had so profoundly affected my life with Jesus for so long that it was like I was experiencing a new kind of Christianity. Um, I think apart from, like, let's say my situation had been different, if I was doing Christianity the way I was doing it, and I hadn't grown up in the home situation I grew up in, then I would have deconstructed. What I mean by that is, I, just, I grew up in a very, very broken, messy, harmful, just not a great home environment, and Jesus rescued me from that. And he was the only solace I ever knew I could ever have. So the moment I got saved was this moment of, even as a 14-year-old, going, Jesus, I've tried everything. Nothing else works. If I don't have you, I'm done. And it's not going to work. Um, and so I knew that there was nowhere else to go. I knew that there was not another option. It was either, I just knew with everything in me that it was true. But I hated being a Christian. I hated being, which, is, which sounds like a statement that just should never come off of someone's lips. But that's how I felt. Like I was struggling with addiction. And I was so mad that I wasn't allowed to just do whatever I wanted. I was living in constant shame, like constant shame. Constant self-hatred. I was living in deep legalism, deep, 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 deep legalism. That Galatians 3 passage is one of my favorite scriptures in the entire Bible. 
because Paul just puts it to him straight and it smacks me in the face every single time I want to perform and work for it. Because that's what I tried to do my entire life. And Paul says, you're being a fool right now. Who put a spell on you? You started by the spirit and now you're trying to finish by the flesh. And that was my whole life. I'm going to finish by the flesh. I'm going to work really hard. I'm going to really perform. I'm going to do all the right things. And then I'm still, still not enough. And there's like all these moments where I'm so unfulfilled. I'm so unsatisfied. I'm so depressed. I want to kill myself. And then I'm dating a non-believer and she ruins my life. And I'm like, what's happening? And so it's just like my whole life was falling apart. It was heartbreak after heartbreak after heartbreak. Pain, 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 pain. And like I, I just, I hated being a Christian. I didn't like the Christian experience in any way. Then I had to learn that I didn't really understand the gospel. Yeah. That I made it in somehow, okay? But that my view of the gospel is so broken. Yeah. I didn't really know who Jesus, I didn't understand his heart. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit was playing tobacco in my life to the next level. Like I barely really believed in him. And so my Christianity, the reason I hated it so much was because it wasn't the kind that Jesus had in mind. Yeah. You know? So I just, I hate, so I feel like when I really, my eyes were open, I was like, wow, I've been missing out on how good the love of God is this whole time. Oh man, I've been missing out on how wonderful it is to be in God's presence the whole time. Oh dang it, it turns out that Jesus is better than the things I'm addicted to. Oh my gosh, it turns out Jesus could set me free from the things I was in bondage to this whole time. It was just like, I had this eye-opening moment where it's like, oh, I've been missing out for so long. I've been settling for so long. There was so much good, so much better available to me this entire time, and I just didn't believe it. And so when I began to really believe it, and the lies that Satan had put in my mind for years of my life finally unfolded and finally dropped off my eyes, and that veil was finally ripped away, it was like, and it was like, I, I, I know I was saved before. There's plenty of personal evidence for me on that one, but it was like being re-saved, because my Christianity, I can get it. So that is my wow. So good. But prior to that, I was the master backslider. <laughs> I did more backsliding than I did walking forward. Like, that's just true. And then something changed, and I had the backslid since. So I think we're doing all right. I don't know. Amen. Amen. All right, so we're going to start with this question for all of you. Um, unless anybody else wants to ask I can share really quick. So. I feel like a lot of people not don't really know this, but there was obviously I did grow up in the church, but there was a season where I did go to college and I feel like a lot of my life I was trying to find my identity in a person. And so before Daniel, I, I actually was in a relationship for almost seven years and a lot of people don't know that, but in that relationship, I feel like I was trying to find that identity that I was not getting from the Lord. and. Um, I didn't know that God could actually give me my identity. And so even though I grew up in the church, I was going to worship, I was doing the Bible studies, I was doing all of it, I feel like there was like this, this void inside of me that I didn't know that God could actually fill. And so I feel like after that relationship ended, I felt like, well, this is where I get to discover myself, right? And I didn't realize that there's no discovering without Jesus. <laughs> and so I, I went to college, I joined the the sorority, I joined every organization possible because I was trying to attain some type of identity. And this is what was recognized in our school, this is what people saw, I was like, oh my God, you wanna be part of that, right? And it's funny because in my last four months of college, even though actually that's the season where the Lord called my brother to be a young adult pastor, and that's where he was hanging out with my soon to be husband doing Bible studies and I was doing my own Ooh. thing in that season. <laughs> um, it was, I had four months left to college and I remember telling God, I feel so far from you. I don't even know how to come back to you. Mind you, I was going to church every Sunday. I was going to church every Thursday, but yeah, I felt so far. And I remember that God actually used the very thing that spiraled me out of my relationship with God to scar me back into my relationship with him was was a relationship. And so it's funny because God really does use people. And I love how Steve said, um, my girlfriend who wasn't a believer brought me to the Lord and she wasn't my wife. <laughs> and I feel like God really does use people to really like direct us to where we're going. And that's what happened with me. The Lord used someone and it was not my person, but I felt this 
opportunity from the Lord saying, I'm calling you out and I want a relationship with you. And I feel like that was a, the pivotal moment of my life where it was like, I've already seeked every other lover. I want to truly discover true love. And that's when I discovered his love. And so I completely fell in love with Jesus and I found my identity, but then I also found my purpose and I found my voice and everything shifted from there. And I was like, are you kidding me? All these years I've been seeking for who I've been called to be or my identity and I didn't realize that it was right in front of me. He was pursuing me all along. And so I just want to give that to the women in the room. Fall in love with Jesus and everything else will be added. Like if the husband comes, praise God. If he doesn't, you're in love with your number one uh, lover. And it's it's something that, honestly, it was the best season of my life where I was just Jesus and I. And honestly, as I, as I seeked Jesus, God did bring my husband in. I remember there was a season where I told them, I'm so in love with God. I just want to pursue God right now. And he's like, all right, well, as I seek Jesus, he pursued me. And then eventually the Lord shifted my heart. And then obviously now we're together and we got married. But I just... You know, there is a season where I feel like distraction comes in such little seed form, and we have to be very, very discerning of, is this actually from the Lord? Is this an open door that would take me out from my relationship with God? So, yeah. Thank you. All right, so this is the question for all of you. So you guys... So we were just thinking, like, you guys are all very bold in your platforms about your faith. So tell us about, like, the time where you weren't so bold on your platform. Like, how, how did that look? How did you move from not sharing your faith online to, like, devoting your whole platform to your faith? Because all of you sitting here, that's all we see on your platform. So when, like, how did that happen? Um, I think it just comes as you mature in your faith, you realize 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whatever you do, do unto the glory of the Lord. And so I think that it's, it just, it's, you don't compartmentalize um, your life in a way that, like, I'm a Christian here, but I'm not a Christian there. I'm like a Christian everywhere. Like it's it's me, it's who I am, and everything that I do, I'm gonna do to bring glory to the Father. Um, so I think that it just comes as you mature in your life that like, if you're not talking about Jesus on your platform, leave out like being a quote unquote Christian influencer. Like, I think we all have an obligation to talk about Jesus on our platforms. Um, and so I think that just comes when you knowing your responsibility as a believer. Yeah. I would I would say um, simply I I I'd probably post um, the least on these couches right now, but I believe the Lord is calling me to be more active. But I would say there was things I didn't know uh, I could do or I was fearful of doing um, before getting saved at 14 initially. And then when I got saved, I think the Lord just kind of felt like I couldn't keep quiet. It was the best that way I could. It sounds very simple and elementary. I just kind of felt like I got to tell someone in a very childlike way. And I could do it in a video. And I could put a rhyme together and I could share it with the world. And it was just so simple like that for me. And uh, the way I to do it is uh, in creative ways. I like music and rhymes and poems. And so that's, that's how it was for me. I think God saved me. And along with that, he put some new passions and boldness in me um, to actually do the thing when I used to be very shy and embarrassed of even presenting in front of the classroom. Um, so it just came natural. Share it with the world. Amen. For me, I feel like a lot of my life, I didn't know I had a voice. Mm. Uh, I actually felt there was an attack against my voice because I came from a different country and I had an accent. And a lot of my upbringing, a lot of kids would always kind of make fun of my accent. And people would always be like, why do you have an accent? <laughs> and then I felt like, at one point, I'm like, 
I'm just not gonna say anything. I think it's better not to say anything because I felt, it felt better to be in the room and so I actually was silent, silenced for a lot of my life. And then I remember, I don't know, I think I was 26 and that was that season right after college where I felt the Lord calling me in such a way that I was like, oh my God, wait, God actually, not only is he calling me to have a relationship with him, but he was putting dreams and passions inside of my heart. And then one of the biggest things he began to speak to me is that I put a burning coal in your mouth to speak my word. And then I had this kind of like this awakening and I said, are you kidding me? My whole life, I didn't know that I actually was called to speak. If the devil attacked me for 27, of, 27 years of my life, watch me speak for the rest of my life. And so it was like this shift in my perspective of like, if the enemy tried to silence me for this long, well watch out for what's coming out of my mouth. And so um, I just feel like that put this fire inside of me. Jeremiah talks about how God, like he had, he had this fire burning in his bones that couldn't silence him and he had to speak. I feel like that's what just began to happen. God, be, like, he began to put this fire in me where I was like, what do I do with this fire? What do I do with this boldness? I don't know. And my husband can tell you, like, there's moments where I'm weeping in the presence of God where I'm like, I don't know why, but I feel like I need to post this. I feel like I want to share this. And it's one of those things where you completely even lay down your, your image and how you want to be seen. But you just understand that even the social media that God's given you, it's not for you. It's for someone on the other side of the screen. And that whatever I post, it's not for my edification, but it's for the edification of the glory of God. Dude, everything changes. And so I completely died to, uh, what's the word, just, just like what people thought of me and mostly just, God, who are you calling me to be? I want to be that person and I want to be obedient to the call that you have chosen for me. So. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, I guess there wasn't a moment where I was like, no, I would say not bold. Like I, I believe I had the passion, but I didn't have direction of how to do it, what to do. Um, and I used to play soccer, so here's the cringe part. Like I was just, man, make soccer videos and then the caption out like, oh, Christian. Know, so people like watch skills and you know oh he's a Christian cool. look at this Bible verse but like I had the passion but I knew not how to like approach people or anything um, so my whole life was just soccer and Jesus soccer and Jesus um, sometimes more soccer than Jesus you know I became an idol and then Jesus did like a whole thing in my life but um, that was the thing I had like the passion but I didn't know what to do um, until God said because uh, I wanted to be a soccer player so hey he messy so if I become like messy, I'll preach the gospel and then people will listen to me. You know, because in black in my country, um, they listen to soccer players more than politicians. So it's like, if I'm a soccer player, if I win the World Cup, and I'm like, Jesus. People come to Jesus, right? And then Jesus, you know, having a very honest conversation. Uh, at that moment, was a lot of, was a lot of pain because I had to, you know, reject offers of like actually make this dream, you know, come true, become like professional. Uh, God said, I never change your objective, I change your platform. So I don't want you to be a soccer player, but I want you to like, listen to me. I know you're passionate, but listen, just yeah. learn. So it was a moment where I had to like, just go in my room and <clears throat> since my whole life was soccer, when Jesus took soccer away, I was like, so what am I, what do I do? And those moments was when God spoke to my identity. Show me who I am. And I just went into the super place and started writing sermons. And mind you, I was like, I was doing nothing of my day. Because from 8 in the morning to 8 p.m., I was just playing soccer. So after that, I was like, from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., I'm just talking to Jesus. I'm reading the Bible. And that's when slowly I'm like, sort of what you were saying. Uh, okay, I have words. I have sermons. But I am not a preacher. I am not a pastor. I, how, how do I do this, Jesus? Um, and I believe... Uh, I used my mom like so bad for this moment because I told my mom I was preaching the sermons to my parents. Okay, um, <laughs> so I was like, okay, I don't know what to do. So listen, sit in the couch, I'm gonna preach. Um, but she was like, why don't you put this on social media? I'm like, that's a good idea. I don't know how, but I'm gonna preach to a camera. 
and she wanted you to shut up. She <laughs> did it to the girl. Oh, I just feel like, like mad. And that's, I'm like, wow, thanks, mom. Okay. Uh, but I, I guess that's how it like he happened, and it was just from that moment of like learning stuff, you know, and going to the secret place, and I'm like, okay, I got direction, and how to like approach it. Um, but yeah. Man. Yeah, dude, JD is so pure and hearted that like pure hearted that when he says 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. he was in a secret place, I believe. Like 100 percent I believe. He's like, I love this guy. Uh, I'm gonna answer this question a little bit differently. My TikTok story is boring. I wanted to get famous for being a pretty boy, and then the Lord was like, do something that matters, and I was like, ah, okay. And then back and forth, I was like, but what about the pretty boy thing? I'm actually gonna keep doing that. I'm just on a thirst trap for a little bit. Be pretty boy. <laughs> So, so that's, I did make both, but there was a time. <laughs> um, so that's all, that's cringe. I was very, very insecure. I was just so insecure, like, desperately looking for validation. Um, and, uh, yeah, you drop hundreds of thousands of people in front of a very insecure boy, and that's what you get. But what I want to talk about with the issue of, like, boldness, when I grew up, I started making YouTube videos when I was in fourth grade. I've always wanted to be famous on the internet. It's just like, it was like my childhood dream. You know, like there's, there are thousands of hours of videos of me making gaming videos and, and like, and, and dude, everything you can imagine, I've done it. Dozens and dozens, like I, so many YouTube channels I made. And then like, in middle school, I went into my first like drama class and I was like, oh, I really like making fun of people and getting all the attention, this is awesome. Um, so like you put a mic in my hand and I'm like, no, I'm not worried about it. Like the whole, you know, put me in front of a million people on the internet and I'm it's, I'm, this is fine. Like, I don't. But here's what I'll tell you. I'm deeply introverted. And for years growing up, I had a deep insecurity about whether or not I could hear God's voice. So I hated evangelism. And I was very, very bold in microphone situations and very bold in front of the camera and bold nowhere else. And I'm not, I, that, that's not like, a, I, like, I don't look at myself with this condemnation. I was just like, hey, there was an area for, there was more for me to step into. Um, but you can just like, well, I'm really good at ministry in this area. I'm really good at obedience in this area, so I don't need to like, you know, that. You know, I have friends who are crazy wild evangelists, and they're going to keep being weird how they are, and I love them for it. And I'm never going to have the same personality as them. That doesn't mean the Great Commission doesn't apply to me, you know? But the Lord just, over time, he's like, when are you going to start evangelizing to strangers? And when are you going to start being bold with kids you grew up with or whatever? And it was like, cool. I don't want to do that. And I'm still working through that because I have fear of man a little bit like that I need to kill every day. And just like things I need to crush because who, like, who cares if I can be bold here but I can't be bold there. Like I gotta, come on. Like, same Holy Spirit. So I just, that would be the area I kind of like picked up on like, why I need to be bold here. So I think actually really what has grown my, my boldness in that area is by being around people who are naturally courageous here. Who just ask their, who have an evangelistic Heart. That's what like keeps them excited. That's what makes them go. Is all they want to talk about is lost people. You know, I want to talk about theology. I want to be a nerd. And then I get around kids who weep every single time they think about people who aren't saved. And I'm like, dang, I gotta get like this guy. And but those guys will look at me and go, well, oh, I love how much you know. It's so helpful. Thank you. And it's so it's this iron sharpens iron thing. I'm just yes. not. I'm not just gonna be the thing I'm good at. You know, yeah. I will be the whole fivefold. Oh, and all you know, like I have. The area, that I'm, <laughs> I have the area that I'm naturally gifted in and strong in. That doesn't mean my responsibility to do the rest of it goes away. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you don't need to wake up and be a capital e evangelist tomorrow, but you do need to be a bold, bold and carrying out the Great Commission and sharing the gospel. Yeah. So maybe maybe you're you aren't bold with your like online thing, whatever your social media you need to do. Maybe you're bold, like maybe you're bold online, but you're not bold in person. There's areas of growth in every single one of those things. So that's what I would say. Amen. Thank you. Good. One, one last question. Um, we have so many more questions we want to ask you guys. Um, we'll, both, we'll go ahead and close up in a second. There's one last question I want to ask you. Because um, some of us in the room have audiences that we haven't discovered yet, we haven't reached yet. Um, how did you discover your audience, whether it was through comedy, whether it was through theology, like teaching, and just people being locked into how you articulate, or just pure passion and preaching? 
how did you it, discover that? And, and what's one thing uh, you really just try to get across to your audience, like every day when you uh, go in front of them, essentially? Yeah, okay. Uh, how many of you know who David Lanning is? Does anyone here know David Lanning? David Lanning is my roommate. He's one of my best friends, and he's been doing Christian videos online for years. And David Lanning started a phenomenon on Christian TikTok where he's the guy who films really close to the camera and cries in every video, and he, he quivers his lip really, really talks. And he's very intense like this the whole time. He's the most intense guy ever when he preaches. Funniest, most lighthearted Labrador dude I know when he preaches. He's got motivational music on in the background. He's like really going, he's yelling. And, and he started this phenomenon. I used to go on his account and I would click the down arrow and just watch all the David Lighting clones. I would just laugh. I would scroll through them and just everybody wanted to make preaching videos like David Ladin. And so I started feeling all this pressure when I was like 16, 17. Um, and started getting, this is like 2019, 2020. And I even knew, David had told me already that he started posting videos because he saw my videos. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. That's so awesome. That's so dope. And then I was so insecure that he was growing faster than me and that people liked him more than me that I was like, I'm just going to do it his way. And there are a few really, really cringy videos of me you can find out there where I'm not, not that close to the camera, but a little bit closer than usual. And there's intense music in the background, and I'm really preaching. That's not who I am. Yeah. Yeah. That's not me. I hated watching those videos back because I was just like, ew. You know? I like, I like using weird analogies, and I like being soft, and I like talking really fast, and I like saying big words and being complicated and whatever, whatever. I like just being, I like being dumb and being myself. Like, I just like doing it the way that Jesus has naturally wired me to do it. The problem became when I was like, oh, I'm going to do a David's way. And it just, it just, it would just, it just wasn't working. So I was working and people didn't like it, you know? They were like, this is off, something's wrong, you're weird, you know? <laughs> people liked the way that I did things, you know? Because it's just the way the Lord made me. And so when you are thinking of just any one of you that's like, oh man, I feel like the Lord is drawing me to you, because social media is the most important tool, like, in the, it's just crazy, it's, it's, it's one of, if not the most important tools for evangelizing the world, so important, and it's dark, the Lord is redeeming it, so, so, but, but maybe you like look at it and you're like, man, I feel drawn to do something there, right, piece of advice I'll actually give you is do it the way the Lord has wired you to do it, yeah. don't you know, I, do, I don't want my message to be, just be yourself. You know, like, okay, that's like almost it. <laughs> don't, don't try and squeeze yourself into somebody else's anointing. Yeah. Into somebody else's calling. Yeah. Serve the Lord with your, like, this is what I love. Sorry, I know I answer questions so long every single time, so let me just be done right here. Um, when you read the four Gospels, you can tell when you read them that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John had different personalities. Yeah. Yeah. You can just tell. You can tell when you're reading them. They're different guys that, that looked at things really different. You know, you can look at the disciples. Wow, they have really different personalities. And Jesus loves that. Yeah. You know, why does, like, I think all the time you can get really fundamentalist and be like, humans had almost nothing to do with the writing of the Bible. But I think it's more so like it is a equally divine and equally human work. And God had no problem with human personalities bleeding into the text. Yeah. Right? So he loves working alongside human personalities. He just, he loves your personality, you know? Yeah. You, all He sees all the best parts of you and all the good in you and wants to use that for the kingdom. Yeah. It's like, I want you to seek first the kingdom through this avenue. I don't want you to try and be somebody else. I don't want you to try and reinvent a ministry version of yourself, a more passionate, cooler preacher, whatever version. No, do it your weird little funky way that no one else can do because the Lord loves the way that he intricately designed you to do the things you're called to do. Yeah. Okay? Amen. So, That's so good. When, like when Paul says in Ephesians, like, he called you to good works before the foundations of the world. When he called you, he took into account the way that he made you, right? So, like, the Lord Jesus knew what you were going to be like when he called you. So he's actually developed developed the calling with your personality in mind. You try to be somebody else, the calling's not going to work anymore. And so it's... Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, I'll go. I'll go. Question was. Uh, That's a good question. I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> how do you find your audience? I feel like I almost answered the question. You like answered. I was almost. <laughs> you answered you it perfectly. Discovered your audience. Um, and what would? What's one thing that you try to get across to them when you post? 
Okay, so um, kind of like second to what Elijah was saying. When I started, uh, I did everything, which I'm ashamed to say. Like I did comedy videos, I did dance. <laughs> then the <laughs> like Robin Hood on top of my head. Anthony was scrolling through your videos. JD. Yes. I was. I was scrolling through JD's videos the other night, and he was dying laughing. And I'm like, what are you laughing at? And he's like, this kid's funny. I'm like, what? I haven't seen any funny videos. You got to find those. You got to find those. I've probably got so many of them. But some, I just leave it for, you know, my thorn in the foot, it's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Totally kidding. Um, but I just did so many things, and which, our lives were saying, I didn't feel like this was what God called me to. Because even though I saw, like, you know, fruits, quote unquote, because, oh, comedy videos, oh, this famous person, follow me, Ooh, like, I'm going to keep doing comedy videos. Then dance videos, oh, my, my dance is at the top of the sound, uh, that's cool. Now I look back and I'm like, that's crazy, why did I do that? But it wasn't until I started seeing the skills I got, like, so I started editing videos for like soccer. So God used all those skills and I'm like, why don't you make your videos how you actually like to make your videos? And I like to basically grab hard concepts and just make it easy and practical for people. So I started like, okay, you know, I'm just gonna use the editing skills. I'm gonna just use this message and how can I make it simple? Um, to the point I'm doing videos like, don't be a Christian, uh, you know, when did the book Christian? And, you know, like, then explain and just grab people's attention on that. And I believe, like, that was sort of, um, just helped me to see, like, okay, before I go to an audience, like, what, what is, what does God want me to post? And is it what I really am? And because there's gonna be a moment that, man, you post and, and you, like, you hate it. And you know, truly inside, it's like, this is not what the Lord wants me to do. It's getting views, it's getting likes, but that does not mean God is backing that up. Yeah. Like, you can get the followers, does not mean that God is blessing you because you got followers. So, uh, it's about the obedience. It's like, oh, God told me to do this video. So I'm like, your obedience is not on the views. You're like, yes. sorry, the yes. fruit is not on the views. Yeah. It's not on the likes, it's not on the followers. It's when you obey because God said, put this word, okay, I'll be okay. That's that's when it's good. Amen. Not when you posted the video, like not when you, you know, posted the video and you got a bunch of views, it's when you decided, okay, Lord, I'm gonna follow you. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna make the word, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write that word, I'm gonna share it. Yeah. Or maybe with, with people in person as well, not just on social media. Yeah. You know, if you're not a social media person, do it. But never miss the focus of, um, I always say evangelism. For me, that, that's like, kind of like a reminder for me. Um, evangelism is like a love song. I remember my dad one time in a hotel. He wasn't supposed to do this, but he sang a song to my mom, and it was epic. Not because his voice was amazing; it was just everyone was touched. But like, okay, keep this guy up, grab the mic when he was not supposed to sing a song. And then after that, a bunch of people like ran to my, you know, my parents, trying to meet who, who was this woman, you know, that made this guy so crazy. And you know, I was like, okay, that's cool. And I realized that's the same. And with us and Jesus, it's like, I'm gonna just sing my love song. Yeah. So when I look at my videos or when I speak about Jesus, it's like, this is my love song. And eventually, people are gonna wanna meet what I'm singing about. Yeah. 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 I'll just say something really quick. Um, I just wanna say, just because we have social media is that you know, look at this huge platform. I just want to say that wherever you are right now, that is a platform. And whether you are in the medical field, whether you are a dentist, whether you are a worshiper, a dancer, whatever it is that you're doing, that is the place that the Lord has chosen for you to be obedient and to give Him glory in. And I feel like for me, for a long time, I, when I was growing up, everyone kind of knew what they wanted to do. I just didn't. <laughs> So everyone was like, I want to be a lawyer, I want to be a doctor, I want to be this. And I remember most of my life, like my parents would ask me, like, what do you want to be? Like, what do you want to be? I'm like, I don't know. That was like my most hated question in life. Like, I don't know. And so when this whole social media thing has come about, I'm like, this is just something that I stepped into that I didn't expect for myself. And it wasn't like, oh, this is the dream. It was just something that I felt the Lord was stirring in my heart. I just really felt like saying that because I don't want 
to put like those social media influencers on like this high yes. pedestal. Like, you know, we're all in this pedestal together. And at the end of the day, like I want to be recognized in heaven and not on social media. And so like in your life, like just know that uh, kind of like how Steve was saying, everyone was saying like, we're doing this for an audience of one and our audience and at the end of the day is Jesus. And if he does put a spotlight on it, praise God. And if he doesn't, guess what? Heaven is looking. Okay, so uh, really quick, I just wanted to say that for me it was more like the word influence was introduced to me and someone prayed that over me and I was kind of like, okay, well, I don't really know what I'm called to, but it, in that season I was seeing social media influencers all the time and the girls with the cute outfits and fashion icons and all this crazy stuff and I remember I had just graduated college, I didn't have the finances, but I'm like, okay, well, I got the, the word influence spoken over my life. So I guess I need to be a social media influencer, right? <laughs> and so my husband could tell you we were dating and I would make him do all these crazy photo shoots for me because I'm like, God said that I'm going to be an influencer, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I was so, like, I was so bratty about it. Like, I would switch, like, three outfits. And I'm like, no, you gotta get it like this. No, you gotta, I gotta get the filter right because I'm going to be a social media influencer, right? And so for a whole year, I was in, in this, like, work ethic of, like, I need to make it for myself because I heard the word influencer, right? And then a year later, the Lord said, kingdom influencer. And I was like, are you kidding me? You can't say that in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and so that meant it looked completely different because yes. I wasn't going to be posting like those, the girls that were posting to get followers. It meant that it was going to come from a consecrated, set-apart place of identity and not because of what was trending, but what did God want me to speak about? What did God want me to post? And so there were seasons where God knew that my heart was like, this is my moment. I want to like blow up. All my friends were getting into the whole influencer season of things. And some of them were like getting thousands of followers. They were blowing up. And in those, mo in those months, God would be like, I want you to completely fast your social media. And I'm like, no, this is my moment. Like, you know, you told me I was going to be an influencer, right? And so there was actually a lot of seasons of death where God completely asked me to surrender the thing that he spoke over my life. And so there were seasons where I wanted to post and God's like, nope, take it down. This one's like for yourself. Like It was just so much conviction, fear of the Lord behind it. And honestly, everything that's happened in the last, what, two years has been, it's just been God because I completely released it and I said, God, if this is really what you have for me, like, I want it to be you, and I don't want it to just say what, I don't want it to be like, oh, take it, this. Like, I want it to be like, yeah. you really wanted this to happen for me, right? Yeah. And that's kind of like what happened. There were seasons of where there was a lot of opposition on my social media, and I felt like giving up, and I didn't want to post anymore. I didn't want to do the social media thing anymore. And God kept saying, keep pushing through, because there's an audience, there's people coming. And my husband can tell you, I would, Every time I felt like giving up, he's like, don't give up yet, babe, because I feel like you know deep down that God's called you to this. And so when the people that are now there, like, that are now there, I just want to say this. If you're creating for the kingdom of God, don't create for who's there now. Create out of obedience to the Lord. Yeah, because a lot of times you're thinking about who's watching you, and that makes you not want to post. But if you're doing this from a place, hey, God, I'm doing this because I feel this is what you're asking of me. If it gets recognition, if it gets like or not, whatever, at the end of the day, I did what you asked me, yeah. right? Yeah. It's kind of like worship. It's the same thing in, in as you preach. All of it, it goes back to like, yeah. when you're worshiping, if you're doing it for Jesus, guess what? He's going to be pleased, you know? Yeah. But if you're doing it for, for the people and so that people can praise you, you're going to know deep down it's not for Jesus, you yeah. know? So, yeah, I just really felt like sharing that because I feel like uh, – this wasn't an avenue for me growing up. I didn't know it was for me. And God just opened the door and I stepped into it. So for your life, and if you don't know what God has for you, maybe God is just going to lead you into places that you didn't expect for yourself. But I just, I just, my encouragement is to just allow him to lead you in whatever career or path that he has for you. That's so good. I'll add really quick. Um, so with the with the question, how do you find your audience? I think we'll all agree that it's really living authentically to how God wired you. You know, I think that's the answer. Um, and so we're all really just giving more 
in-depth insight to that. Um, and I think that um, how do you get to that place of living authentic authentically to how God wired you? Um, I think when you really understand that in your life it's more about being than it is about doing, and I think that's why I just love Steve's story so much when you realize like, I was doing, 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 doing without really just like sitting and resting with the Lord and drawing near to him and building that relationship. Um, Romans 1, 6, it says we were called to belong to Jesus. That's so beautiful. Yeah. One that's just one that's just beautiful. Like I can just weep right now. Just I was called to belong to him. Yes. What? That's crazy. And and I so I think and I love saying this that and we use the word calling interchangeably, but God doesn't call us to a vocation. He calls him to, he calls us to himself. And so if the calling over my life is to him, then I think everything else works itself out if I truly understand that. Like the calling over my life is to him, not to do for him, but it's to him. And so um, in understanding, but Ephesians 2, we are or God's handiwork created for good works in Christ Jesus. Um, and, and understanding that there are works that were prepared for us in advance for us to do. Um, there are works that, that he does appoint us to, and I think that's why we need the Holy Spirit to, to understand, okay, where is the works that you prepared for me to do that was before creation, before I was even born, you've already prepared works for me to do. So Holy Spirit, guide me to those works. Guide me to those works. But the works come second to my calling. And my calling is to him. Amen. Thank you, Kelsey. So good. Can you have a little extra? Did you guys like this? Yeah? Did you hate it? Did you love it? Yeah. I feel like we've been on a journey for the past like two hours. In like I just looked at the time and I'm like, whoa. We're super uh, late, but we're going to break. We're going to pray first, and yeah. then we're going to break, um, and then we'll come right back. Okay. Thank you all for sharing. So let's Everybody pray. who shared um, previously, I feel like we just heard the best of yeah. 15 <laughs> sermons. Yeah. So Can we give it up again for everybody? <laughs> <that's all speakers. laughs> Lord, thank you for this wisdom that you've brought before us, Lord, and these experiences. Thank you for every failure that you brought to this stage tonight, Lord, because it turned into a magnification of your goodness and your grace, Father. We thank you for that, Lord. And Father, I pray that we would not let go now. Let us draw closer to you. Let us lock in. Let's keep going. In Jesus' name, we love you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord.